This is Hose, and welcome to another PowerPoint tutorial. We've been working on a modern PowerPoint sl slide deck step by step, and this time we're going to showcase how you can do material design tab bar in PowerPoint. We're going to be doing something similar like this, in which we can showcase the product, and then as the bar moves, the display changes. There is a more complex and a more polished version in which the transition looks smoother. But unfortunately, it becomes a little bit more complex and time intensive. So I'm not gonna cover it this time. This works in PowerPoint 2007 or newer and Office 365. So let's start by opening a blank PowerPoint slide or just create a new slide from, from a previous project, it doesn't matter. We wanna go here to view and slide master you want to come here to slide master insert layout Control a or command a to select everything and then click delete and come here to insert shapes get a rectangle and draw a rectangle from the top full width and give it some good height it's just completely guide. I don't have a specific value for it. And draw a text box. Go back and insert text box and draw draw something on it. You want to right click, edit text, and let's say that if this one is called advantages. Center the text and change it to white. The next thing is that you want to center this. You can do it by selecting the text and clicking here on the back. But now that I think about it, let's gonna leave it for last. We're gonna copy the text in here. I'm gonna paste it as many times as we want to have our text. In our case, we're gonna cover only four, four tabs. Here, let's say that we have benefits, features, advantages and benefits are, are kind of the same. Features, pricing, say. Now that we got all four of them, we're going to shift click each one of them. And we're going to click here on a range, align, check that align to slide is selected. And after that, you're gonna click here, distribute horizontally. This will give them the right spacing in between the, between each of them. You're gonna come back here to range, align, and align middle. Nope, nope, go back, my bad. You're gonna select the text on the back, gonna come back and range, align, and you're gonna click here, align selected objects. With this, we're gonna come back and align, align middle, and this will put it, put them perfectly aligned in the middle. The next thing you want to do is you want to click here and insert shapes, another rectangle and draw a rectangle that has some height and that starts from here from the, from, from the left. Give it a white color and it extends. So it stays at the middle of the, of the, of the text in here. Compare it, see, yeah, this is good. It's more of a trial and error. We can reduce the height a little bit. Let's have it to 0.1. Move it here to the bottom. And something important, let's remove the outline. And place it down. Now, we can do two things. We can create, click here on the shape, come back to shape effects, come here to shadow and click at bottom shadow. So you're gonna with this, we're gonna be able to easily distinguish with the with the background. Another suggestion that I that, that I that I give you is that you should change the background styles by going to, to slide master, click here on format background, and on solid fill, give it a light gray. This is going to help you differentiate with the with the bar and create some sort of of contrast. Click back on on, on the bar here. Click format and you can change any color you want. Be that blue, the other blue, 
light blue shape outline. And now that you have this, you're going to click on the bar. You're going to see how it looks. Again, this is one version of, of, of doing it. There, is, there are more ways on, on doing this. This is the easiest version of all. The problem with this approach is that the, the shadow, you will not be able to place objects below it since this is kind of the background. And what I want, what I, what I mean by that is that when you close the view, you come here to layout and you apply our custom layout that we created. We have everything in here. But for example, imagine we come here and we insert and we draw a picture, a rectangle. See that it does not go on, on, on the back because the slide master is like a background itself. So there's no way going back. You saw that one disabled. We, when we went here at the slide master, we cut the, the bar that we created, we closed master and now we paste it. We want to do this because we need action from, from the tap bar. I'm gonna click here, format, and I'm gonna, gonna paste it and it's gonna paste at the exact same location. If not, remember to move it to the same place that it was originally. Come here to animations, click add animation, and click here on lines. Effect options, move it to right. And this is kind of cumbersome because now you're gonna you're gonna have to do a trial and error process because what you want to do is the end of the animation needs to, to end at the middle of benefits. And there's no tool in PowerPoint that I know of or any option in PowerPoint that allows you to fit right in the middle. Let's shift F5 to go to presenter view and click space. And you're going to start seeing the bar moving. We're gonna press escape and we're gonna click again on the bar. I'm gonna click here animation pane from the animations pad. And we're going to reduce the duration to one second. After we have reduced the duration, we're just gonna go back again to shift F5 and we're gonna play space bar. And we start seeing that the bar started to move. The trick in here is going to be that we're going to put certain things like a shape in here or an image, a shape. Let's say that we have that thing. It doesn't matter, honestly, what do we have in here? It's just a quick and dirty example. The effect is created when we right click on the slide view and we click du duplicate slide. Everything is copied from the same from the same slide above, but the difference is that we're going to move this bar. We're going to place it at the middle of benefits. And again, this is going to be a trial and error process because we do not have an exact way of placing it. There there are certain ways that 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 you kind of create some sort of guidelines for you to move it at first. Yeah, we can try that. Let's go back to view, slide master. There are certain ways you could potentially just copy. This is one way, copy, close master view, paste it. It's gonna paste it at the same metal. And then you can click both of them and click arrange, align, align selected objects, arrange, align, align center and then move it a little bit so benefits just fits right in the same place. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it would be to come here to arrange, no, come back to view, slide master, insert shapes, line, and draw a line from the middle of the, of the text box. And you can create some sort of guides with this. The other approach is kind of faster, so I do recommend the other approach. And once we have that, we can erase this one, for example, erase these two, create some sort of shape, different shape. And okay, we go here to the first slide, F5, and when we click the bar, it moves, and we have this one. You see that, 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 what should actually happen is that this one should disappear as the bar is moving. But right now there are two limitations with that approach. Number one, 
it becomes much more complex. It is possible. It is entirely possible. I'll make a video on how you can do it. But the problem is that it just creates so much complexity for you to handle when you have a lot of things going on in the same slide. Because all the animations, what you're going to be doing is that you're going to animate everything on the same slide in here. And that's going to convey that for the sliding to occur and you want to have something super smooth, you want, you're going to be applying animations with the lines. And if you've been seeing previous videos, you may, you may remember that I, I recommend a lot of grouping the items, that you can group them and then apply the animation. But the problem with that is that if I want to have some sort of animation for individual items, then I will not be able to have it. We can create some sort of, of hack, you can put it that way, that we could be overlaying elements on top of each other and then grouping them. And if I didn't make sense with what I just said, don't worry about it. It's We can keep doing the same thing, duplicate slide. Come back to view, slide master, let's copy features. Let's copy, let's copy both of them. Let's close, close view, features, they're placed at the same place. Click here. Oh, click here, move it. Then features, align, center, in features, it moves. Kind of smaller, and then we duplicate this slide. Remember to to erase the text boxes that we created. Features. Where were not, these ones were not erased. We placed them, and this one we placed them at the at the top, at the at the end. It doesn't matter if it, it if it does not center correctly, but it should because we distributed them horizontally. And for the last one, we remove come here to animations and delete the animation. And let's see the whole effect coming into place. Draw another, another shape. Quick dirty example. Here, just remove the rectangle. And here we go. F5 benefits. Okay. But features, but pricing, but unfortunately, PowerPoint doesn't have an automated way to advance to another slide, so that's going to be a problem. But this is basically the the easy concept. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can create and add special effects into the slide, so it makes it look more transitionable or or a seamless transition. If you like this video, comment below, subscribe, and hit that like button, and let me know for, for the next one. See you around.